I'm Chef Egg, and we're going to get underneath the shell of the most creative people in Baltimore. This is What's Cracking with Chef Egg. So we talk about the work-life balance, and then I always bring it back to when I was, you know, 25 years old, freewheeling bachelor. You could really concentrate on your job right. and your, the start of your career sure. all day long, every day. Right. And, uh, you know, you could go out with your friends, you could party, and it, was, it all went together. Right. And, you know, now that we have, we got families, um, right. you have three kids. Three, yeah. Three, three kids, boys, you got, yeah. you know, lovely, we've got lovely wives. Yep. And we know that, you know, work life is, is awesome and challenging, and then home life is equally as sure. awesome and challenging. Right. So, as a dad, and we've had conversations about this before, you know, I got to be at home with the kid. Uh, and right. you're just sitting there playing blocks, and you're like, oh, my God, this suit needs to go out. Or this call needs to be made. Right. Um, you know, that's the balance. How do you work that balance? Because I always say, I say to myself, you're never going to get this opportunity. Like, this yeah. might seem like nothing now. Right. But you need to just sit here. And, again, keep your mouth shut. Play the blocks. And enjoy it. And enjoy it because th- it, this is the magic hour. How, How do you, you deal with that? For what I – so – you know, with this is a very service based, yeah, oh yeah. you know, as is yours, right? So, um, what I've found is that the mornings are good times for me, and it also works out with my schedule with my wife because mm-hmm. she goes to work early in the morning and then she gets off work earlier. So, I come in later and it gives me the time in the morning, and plus, it's like right when the kids are waking up and everything like that. So, it's like Mornings around my house, or that's the that's the time when I went, you know, before everything starts getting crazy yeah. and the day really starts getting rolling. That's the sweet spot usually for me, okay. Because you know I end up coming down here and I, you know I start seeing clients from lunchtime on, and then you have people want to come in in the afternoon or after work in and the evening. In the evening, so it's like it kind of rolls, you know. So it just and you know I realize too is that if I do that, then I'm on the road when it's not a rush hour yeah. time. So. But it's, you know, it was all kind of, you know, assessing what's working in the business and how do you balance that stuff out and, and how much do you want to work and what are the numbers that you need to hit and, you know, all of that stuff. But um, but I also think, you know, it's like my oldest son works with me now mm-hmm. and then I have two younger boys and I'm like, geez, you know, there's, what, what could it be like if they all ended up coming to work with me? You know, and that's because what I've realized is that, you know, when you become an adult, is that you spend a good bit of your time working, right? Yeah, right? Especially as you're starting a career, like you were talking about. <laughs> so that's kind of like a time where, you know, like with Seth, we spend a lot of time together, more than we ever have been able to in the past, really. So you, you see that that's um, that that's pretty amazing. The, the like family business stuff is just that that's it's pretty fascinating the way that's kind of panning out and everything, you know. It's, Pretty cool. What, uh, so your son Seth, he's 22, 23 years old? Uh, yeah, it's, he'll be, uh, 23 tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I know, you know, you know, sometimes you wring your hands like, is this going to work out? Yeah. How do you get through those challenging times, you know, working with your family? Because I know just from experience, you know, I've got a great family, but right. if I have to be in the same room with them for more than two hours, shit's going to go down. Um, so, you know, yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, how do you work that out where, you know, it, it, clearly it's your son, yeah. you're the boss, you're the mentor, uh, and then you've got some young energy in the room that can be, um, you know, they, they, they can do their own thing from time sure. to time. So how, how do you guys work that out and still, you know, keep the family together? Right. Um, well, you know, I would say overall, overall, he's been a great student. Mm-hmm. At first, it was kind of, it was pretty challenging. For both of us, really, you know, um, and then he's really, he's hit a good stride, and he's getting success of his own, and I think that when you start to get a taste of success, it's, you know, you, you most people really like it, and you want to figure out how do you continue on on that, yeah, yeah. and then you get to that point when you start figuring out what do you got to balance, and so, um, you know, it, it's it's really been, we, we, we play off each other really well. Um, we spend so much time around each other, and I realized that it's like, I think it hit me for, after he was around for a while, and I started hearing him kind of like, I would hear him speaking with someone, and he'd say what I would have yeah, said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it was like, it just, now it's kind of like you sort of finish each other's sentences kind of thing, and um, but it's it's working out really well. But then, you know, and then as far as 
like I was saying with the young kids, is that you know them is you know when I'm at home. But it's it's tough when you run a business because now we're in a twenty four seven world. Yeah, right oh yeah, now, you I know. know what I mean, and and when you're when you're when you started a business from nothing, is that you kind of never forget the nothing part, right? And <laughs> what opportunities are all about, right? And and so, um, and that's a that's a learning thing. So it's like I think you're constantly learning. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what I'm saying is that it's like. And it might be, what I've found is that it's a lot of times you're learning things that you didn't necessarily know that you were signed up for. Yes. You know, it's these lessons that kind of come out of the blue and you're like, boy, I didn't see that one coming. But you have to sort of work through it. But ultimately, you know, it's like we're, we're, we're growing a business and we're at a really good spot right now. What we're starting to do now is, in the past I've had other people working here yeah. and, you know, tried to mentor them and grow them. and. And they weren't ready for that, mm -hmm. and now I've been able to go and take some of those up, that, you know, my son, and really, you know, sometimes had to be really, really tough on him to to extract out of him what I saw that he didn't quite see yet. Yeah. It's a very mentoring is sometimes really, really trying. I can understand why people are teachers, and then I wonder why you would want to be a teacher because yeah. it's very, it's difficult. You know, I mean, it's it's a it's a really tough job if you're if you really, really care. Yeah. Right. And that's the thing is I, I can't see doing it any other way. If you don't, if you don't have that kind of passion towards helping someone else, then, then it's like, you're probably going to do more harm than good. Um, <clears throat> I guess this is, we talked about this earlier, but you know, the job satisfaction, um, you know, having your son say you were right, dad, I shouldn't have did that. That was a mistake. Or it comes every once in a while, every once in a while you get a, you get a little bit of that. Um, so here's a, it's a good question. Um, when I'm in people's homes and I see them cooking or I'm watching television and they're making fundamental mistakes, basic fundamental mistakes, right. I go crazy. You can't say, turn it off. You can't turn you can't turn the, I can't turn the fact that I'm a I'm a I'm a chef and I'm a teacher. Right. It's in my blood. Right. So when you go down, let's say Light Street, right sure. down there like Light and Pratt and Lombard, yeah. and you see all of those ill dressed lawyers with their frumpy jackets and their and their loose pants. Sure. Do you just want to scream out of your window and say, throw cards at people? Well, you know, it's there's a couple of ways of looking at it. When I first when I first started, is that I found that I was like, you're constantly at, you're looking and you're seeing you're noticing stuff all the time. It's the same thing. If I'm watching television yeah. and I see things that are wrong, it's like that's just it becomes a part of you. Yeah. But I mean, I look at it where I'm like. It's job security for me. That's the way I look at it. Is that there's there's plenty of business to go around. Yeah. And you know, and what I and I've also really learned that what I do isn't for everyone. Sure. That's an that's an interesting thing of realizing like you're never gonna make everyone happy because at some point <coughs> you wanna make everyone happy, right? I mean it's that, nice it's, to make people happy. It is, but it's like but then when you realize it, you're not gonna do that for everyone, right? And so ultimately then you you sort of realize it's hard enough to keep yourself happy. Yeah. You know, and so if you focus on that, then usually the spillover means that you make other people happy, right? That's kind of the way it goes. I want to yell at those people in ill-fitting suits just because I know you. Yeah. And my friends say, I, I go to people's houses and I see them using their knives wrong. And I'm like, Chef Egg wouldn't do that. Yeah. I'm like, well, that makes me feel really nice. Well, I mean, th that's where the part of, of, you know, being in a situation where you can educate someone. Oh, yeah. Right? And that's, I mean... I, I, that's what we get to do that all the time when when guys come in here and I think that when when they come in here and the environment that we have here and that they realize that it's like that we're not going ultra highbrow on yeah. them is that we're keeping it very you know just kind of just th this is a kind of environment where it's cool guys can be guys too right you know and you can just speak freely and you can really help someone that to really make them dress the best that they possibly can and we've taken plenty of guys who are not known for how they dress and then turn them into being like where people after they've been working with us for a while people can't even remember when they weren't you know dressed great all remember the time. schlubby bobby yeah I don't remember that's the thing it's, it's it's funny you know what i mean but we have we definitely have some guys who uh well i, I a lot of times guys will tell me i don't have any fashion they'll tell me you know they're telling me that they don't have any fashion sense and i'm like look you wouldn't be here if you didn't yeah. have any fashion sense. It's just my job to go and help. I need to find out who it is that you really are and, and what the clothes need to do for you. And then we piece this whole thing together to make you look the best that you can. And then as we grow it, as you grow your wardrobe out, is that you, you get more comfortable and confident with wearing things that you might not have originally yeah. tried in the beginning.
It's like, ooh, that pink tie looks really nice on me. I did, never knew. It's funny you said that because it's like, you know, when I, when I first lived in London, I never wore pink. Right, and it was like I just I had my preconceived notions about pink, and I never wore it, and I didn't think it looked good on me, and everything like that. And now it's at a point where it's like our logo is in pink. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like I just I would. I, it's it's interesting how you can change, but it was also having someone that kind of said, "Hey, try this," you know. And then it's like, and then you know, guys are funny like that. You have to kind of you have to build like someone will tell it to you and then you have to kind of build your own confidence yeah, 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 and then yeah, once yeah. you feel it you're like okay I got this I rock pink now <laughs> all day long yeah 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 it's funny uh, so Chris I would love to ask you about your nonprofit, the okay. sharp dressed man yes uh, I want to ask you about you know you know what sharp dressed man is uh, the kind of people you're helping but also what made you get into you know doing a nonprofit like that so could right. you tell us about not uh, the sharp dressed man Okay, so Sharp Dress Man is a 501c3 tax-exempt organization that we started about six years ago. Um, we've been working with um, other nonprofit organizations who were giving us space to house the clothing, and yeah. we were helping the guys that were going through their program. We worked, did that for years, um, mainly with Living Classrooms Foundation. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you're getting suits. Who, who, who are you putting in suits? Who are these people? Well, so the suits are they're being donated to us, first off, by clients and friends and people who hear about yeah. us who don't need the suits anymore, right? So it's like if someone retires, loses weight, gains weight, passes away, um, you know, is, is changing up their fashion style, whatever, is that, um, you know, people have clothes that are sitting there in their closet and they don't need them or want them anymore. So that was kind of where it all sort of started from. And then we would work with a bigger organization who had space where we could house the clothing because one of the reasons why people want to get rid of the clothes is because they want the room in their yeah, closet, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So it's like, so that means you have to have somewhere to put them and clothes do take up some space for sure, especially suits. So we'd work with, a, work with an organization, house all the clothing there, and then we, the Living Classrooms Foundation has a program that they help guys that are coming out of being incarcerated. Okay. And they, they go, they actually go into the jails before the guys are released mm -hmm. and find the guys who are really trying to go and better themselves. Yeah. And so um, when they come out, they'll go through this program that's about a year long and it's kind of a, you know, sort of a, a metamorphosis type of thing. Mm -hmm. And um, when the guys are ready to go and interview for jobs, then they would come into our boutique and we would suit them up and so that they could go out and interview. So that was kind of, that's how we've been doing it and we've been doing it with basically very little overhead because the space was given to us, the clothes were given mm -hmm. to us. And then, um, then uh, Living Classrooms had downsized the facility they were in and we went into a much smaller space and we realized we had the momentum, we were helping a lot of people yeah. and other people were hearing about us and wanted to send people to us. But now we were in a much smaller spot and we decided to branch out and get our own space a year and a half ago. Um, yeah, I guess it was almost two years ago. It was almost two years ago that we we rented this place down in the old garment district yeah. slash downtown area on Park Avenue, and you know we didn't have a lot of money to work with, and um, so we took this place that was in pretty bad shape and fixed it all up ourselves, and we had the same thing. All volunteer people would come down and help us paint and you know I have a I have a truck and tools and we would bring everything down and fix this place up and we had it up and running by like September of uh, 2015 and then March 1st 2016 be a year right mm -hmm. is that the um, we had a fire at that location. Oh boy. So we have a fire and it was an electrical fire of some wiring that was kind of like on the sort of like in between the walls yeah and um and it uncovered all the problems in the building and the building was condemned oh boy so um so we were kind of all of a sudden you know the building is on lockdown and we can't do what we're supposed to do the electric is cut off yeah. to the building and um and then we were real fortunate that the city stepped up and said we have a place that's around the corner that um that you might want to go and take a look at we might be able to help you out and so we moved into a huge location around yeah. the corner and we've been in there since april 1st and that that place is like ten thousand square feet on the main floor but even with the fire and everything we dressed 1604 guys in the last year 
And what do you see? You know, these guys <clears throat> roll in with what they have on their back. Sure, yeah. And what is the difference, you know, in 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 attitude uh, that putting a suit on a gentleman uh, in that position, you know, how do, how do you see them? How do you see that change? It's it's. Um you know that you see the physical change of the you know of the clothes they look different mm -hmm. from you know from across the room but the the body language part of it and Stand it's up like a little taller and they, and chest they, out. And they smile yeah you'll get a lot of guys who are very have a lot of apprehension of mm -hmm. what's going on yeah. who are these guys can I trust them and they're coming from that kind of mindset yeah. of you know being in jail and having bad circumstances sure. and everything like that and then all of a sudden it's like I'm in a trusting environment and w since we we bring the groups of guys in through whatever program that they're working through. Because yeah. the, the prerequisite is you just can't come in off the street. Yeah. You have to be working through something to better yourself, sure. whether it's through addiction or homelessness, or we work with vets and students, all kinds of people. But we don't do the, we don't do the screening. We have the, that organization doesn't, mm -hmm. and they bring them to us when they're, when they're ready. So you, you, you get these groups of guys that come in, and they're going through whatever their journey is with a group of other people who are kind of in the same boat. Yeah. So... It, it's when when the guys start seeing other guys get dressed up and they start complimenting each other then it just sort of spreads like a wildfire and yeah. we we set up a cool environment in there too it's a big space and we have a sound system in there and Keeps we got the tunes cool, going. yeah we got good music going um, we've been bringing in a chef who's been cooking a lunch for them cool. so it's like so that's always good right so I'd ask you to do it but this guy's you know, it's a different story so you know, I wouldn't mind having some Chef Bay over there. We'll have to talk about that. Gotcha, off anytime, anytime. So, um, but we did just bring in barbers. Oh, that's the best. So it's like, so it's, we open up once a week and we do it on Wednesday and we open the doors at noon and the whole thing kicks off and everything is volunteer based right now. So it's like, it's the people that are sorting the clothes and sizing the clothes and styling the guys ev across the board is that everyone's there because they want to be there, yeah. right? So it's just this great environment where it, it, it really feels like you're throwing, I guess it goes back to the party thing. It's like yeah. we're throwing a party on a Wednesday at noon, and it just so happens to be that it's like, you know, you're dressing all these guys, you fire up the tunes, and everybody's having a good time, and they look sharp and everything, and then it's like, and then when you see however many people were there for the day, it's been varying anything between like 30 and 80 a week. So, you know, it, sometimes it gets pretty crazy, um, but it's, it's real powerful to see. I mean, you really see this change that happens with these guys, and that's the thing that kind of keeps you wanting to come back because you see that you're actually helping people. Um, you know, you mentioned, you know, you know being in a, a place where you do need help. Yeah. Uh, have you ever had a point in your life where you were, you know, down, whether it's, you know, emotionally, spiritually, you mm. know, uh, dependency. Sure. Um, that somebody helped you. Yeah, man. That's why I do the deal. Yeah. I do the deal because, uh, you know, um, you know, I'd mentioned that I've been a musician all my life and that, uh, that can, um, be a pretty crazy lifestyle. It can. I know it well. <laughs> and I, uh, I live that to a hundred percent um to the point of just about to ruin basically and uh and then i realize i'm like i can't live like this anymore and i, I turn my life around and um you know and, and and it's it's been an amazing journey and what they say is that you know in order to keep it you got to give it away oh yeah and i'm like so i you know as i do in classic Chris style is that it's like I'm, I'm just kind of like a guy of extremes and I'm a guy of extremes when I was doing self-destructive things and I'm a guy of extremes when I'm doing good things so I'm trying to keep you know things on that side and I have been for years it's working so I've got enough proof to show me to keep putting one foot in front of the other yeah. and then I can also kind of you know it's like and it's inspirational when you it's, it's inspirational in a way when you're helping people it's inspirational way to remind yourself that of what it was like when things weren't so good yep. and I have to have that kind of I have to have those kind of memories to that no matter how good thing is going around here is that it's like that I can be an absolutely self-destructive person and I could ruin it all and I just and I don't I don't want to do that yeah. so I, I just keep it fresh in my brain over and over and over again 
and it propels me forward. So it's like I've kind of found a way to be able to use it for good, which has been very interesting. I mean, to think that a decade ago, I didn't even own a suit, and now I have plenty, and I make plenty, and we give them away. And that you're the voice of suits in a major city in America. <laughs> it's pretty fascinating. It's, but that's sort of what, you know, that's when you put your mind to something, yeah. you know, and it was just, and I, I, I needed the right opportunity for me, and I, then I realized after a while that no one was going to hand it to me. I needed it really, if I wanted it done the way that I wanted it done, I had to create it myself. And so here we are, you know, after some time of really going after it and having the vision is that it's it's really started to pan out but um yeah i mean I, you know uh it's 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 amazing to be able to help these guys and I, that's where our volunteers come from yeah mainly our volunteers are guys that we've given suits to and then they want to come back and they want to help out and i tell them like get dressed up in the suit come back next week and if you want more clothes keep coming back every week and I can, i'll pay you in clothes and they love i mean we have some guys who they look sharp they come yeah. in there every week and they help us out and and it's, it's, you know, everybody wins, right? I mean, those are the type of scenarios that you want in general, isn't oh, it? Absolutely. Everybody gets a fair deal. Everybody feels comfortable with it. I mean, that's like, it shouldn't be asking too much. Well, uh, I don't think it's asking too much. Um, but, Chris, I want to thank you for allowing me to interview uh, you, uh, you know, learning from you, uh, you know, being a friend, uh, coming to your parties. Uh, you know, getting to meet all the cool people that you know and nice. being friends with them. Um, it's been, uh, you know, it's been a pleasure for me. I hope it's been a pleasure for you. Absolutely. Man, and, you rock uh, it. Every time it, it's, you know, at, at what point do I give the direct plug for, like, <laughs> hire this guy for your parties? He's great. I mean, it's like I, I can't say um, it enough. You know, I'm, I'm how doing... Many times have you, how many parties have we I mean, several. It's probably been five so far. I will never forget the time we were, we were here and I look over and you, and you were... Yeah, the flames going and the whole place smelled like garlic and everything. And I was like, this is amazing. And then you did the, the show here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is it's like, you know, it was the same thing though. You were the spot where you were like really getting yourself out there. And that's the, that's the passion and the drive part, right? And it's how do you unlock that, right? And then once you do, then you realize that it's like you'll, you'll work really hard to make it happen. Yeah. And I, look, I'm... I love the fact that when I can do these events is that I know that I have a team of people oh, who, yeah. who just who are professionals, do what they're supposed to do, and you've passed the test every time, <laughs> man. So thank you. Thanks, brother. Thanks right for on. the interview. I appreciate you it. You got it, man. Glad to be here. Thanks, right. bud. Yep. One, two, three. I'm Chef Egg, and we're going to get underneath the shell of the most creative people in Baltimore. This is What's Cracking with Chef Egg.